and my enjoyment was like watching movies and you know not really i didn't have a lot of enjoyment in life <clears throat> i didn't have a zest for life i didn't have a lot of uh i didn't have hope i'd say i didn't have plans for a future i was just holding on and i was just hoping and praying that every time i went to the doctor i wasn't going to be diagnosed with cancer or something that's Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, I'm DC. Okay, so today I have a great guest for you, Larry All Hands. Now, Larry, he is ex-Navy and ex-Army. He's had um, quite an interesting life, actually. If you get to know him, he has a, a great story. But since going carnival um, and noticing the differences in himself, attitude, emotional uh, health and physical health, he has decided to raise awareness for first responders and uh, vets because of the high depression and suicide rate. Um, it's a noble cause and, you know, he does a great job. He has a great channel. So you know, I'll show you his channel throughout the interview. But listen to his story in his own words. Um, again, he's a great guy and uh, I hope you enjoy. Okay, so Larry, you want to tell us a little bit about your background and uh, what led you to the carnival diet? Yeah, sure. So I'm Larry. I'm uh, from Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm a retired soldier and a former U.S. Navy submariner. So if you see the picture behind me right there, that's a submarine in the North Pole and that's a submarine in the channel. So and then uh, wow. there's some army pictures behind me, too. But so I've done uh, I did 20 years. I did uh, six years on submarines in the 1980s, got out and then came back in and did uh, army and army National Guard. <clears throat> and then uh you know, I was always athletic. I played rugby. I played lacrosse. I wrestled. I ran track. So I was always pretty athletic. And then in the military, it kept me in reasonably good shape uh, because I had to get ready for schools and everything. So I, most of my life was in pretty decent shape <clears throat> with a few exceptions. And then uh, I, I remember when I turned 50, I was still, I retired when I was 53. So I was turned 50. I was still in the military. And my body just didn't respond to exercise like it used to, like I expected it to, because I used to kind of know what it felt like to work up to get ready for a school or for a physical fitness test. And, you know, injuries started piling up. My body stopped responding and I started putting on more weight and it became harder and harder to maintain standard so much so that the last year I couldn't really maintain the standard. I had to, <clears throat> I couldn't run anymore. So I, cause I had injuries in my legs. So I had a, what's called a walking, um, a walking profile, which let me do basically a, a march for my uh, physical fitness test, a, a speed march, like they call it a forced march. Um, yeah. So I, at that point, you know, my body had, and I just assumed I chalked it up being old. I was like, well, I'm in my fifties, you know, that's bound to happen. It happens to all 50 year old guys. I thought, <laughs> and then, and then uh, COVID happened and the lockdown and then eating terrible food, uh, just depression, sitting uh, you know at home alone a lot, and just I just put on huge amounts of weights. So I went, I, we weren't, I, I left the military. I was in my probably about two fifty five to two sixty, and I got up to two eighty. So uh, right. and just all fat, you know, and and just became in terrible shape. And then even after COVID, because it was twenty twenty two, sorry twenty twenty three when I found this. So I was I had gotten up to two eighty over that period. I was still in terrible shape in 2023. So at the age yeah. of 56 in 2023, I saw a video on YouTube for Dante Fregno. And it was like 127 days of lion diet. And it just blew my mind because it showed his whole transition in 127 days. And then, of course, I was curious. So I saw his recent videos and he looked even better. Like years later, he looked like a different person. Everything from his cadence to his gait, the way he looked to his attitude, everything was different. And it was all better. And I was like, wow, that's really what I want. So then I kind of went down the, you know, I started searching for carnivores on YouTube. And that's when I found the doctors, all the doctors we know, Barry and, you know, um, Chafee and Baker and, and uh, Kilts and all these guys. And then realized there was a lot of legitimacy to this. It was because I had heard of carnivore before when I'd done keto and I used to do keto to get ready for my, 
I started with Atkins and went to keto when I was getting ready for my military schools. I do it for a short period, like two months to get ready for school. And it always helped. Uh, and I always maintained that I would stay on afterwards. Like, oh, this time I'm just going to stay on it because I always felt better. Not all the healing, yeah. but I did get weight loss and better energy. And it, invariably, every time I would fail, I would always slip off. But once I did this uh, carnivore, once I realized it was legit and I went all in, you know, I basically made it my Rubicon. I crossed the Rubicon. I was not going back and, you know, just got rid of all my food at one time and went 100 percent in. And since then, it's been a year now. So I've been a year carnivore on day hunt, day 367 now. And um, it's just been fantastic. It's the easiest. It was difficult to do. It was simple, but it's the easiest to maintain. It was difficult in the beginning. Now it's not difficult. It's easy to maintain. So um, that's the way it worked. And now I've gone from 280 pounds down to uh, 233 right now, which is about my college playing weight. And I'm getting my abs back and everything. It feels great. It feels fantastic right. to be 58 years old. Uh, I'll be 58 May 4th. And I'll be in the best shape I've been in in decades. That's great. Yeah. So, I mean, how long was the transition for you? To the transition uh, to being fully fat adapted, to becoming yeah, a Yeah, well, from the time you found Dante's um, video to the time you were, went full carnival, how long did well, that take you to do? Just a couple of days. I yeah. saw it and I, and then I started watching the, and then I went through, you know how it is when you see something, you start watching all the videos. So I sat at home over weekend and just watched video after video after video, you know, um, trying to figure out what was right and how to do it. And luckily I found the doctors and started watching Ken Berry. And I already knew Ken Berry from doing keto because he is keto before he went carnivore. And back when I was doing keto in 2017 to get ready for a school, I'm sorry, 20, oh, 2015, I think, to get ready. He was doing keto back then. And anyway, it was quite a while ago. So his videos yeah. are still out there. When I saw him, that it gave immediate credibility to Carnivore. I was like, okay, he's figured this out and taken the next level. <clears throat> Whereas when I was keto before, I thought that Carnivore was just super extreme. It was silly. It was ridiculous. It was a bunch of cavemen, you know, <laughs> acting, yeah. acting crazy. And I really hadn't, I, but I had not looked into it. I just dismissed it. And, uh, yeah. you know, shame on me because I could have had uh, another probably 10 years of great living if I had not dismissed it, if I'd actually dove yeah. in and looked at the science. Because the science is all there, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah, we, we could have done it a lot earlier. You know, the Atkins diet was back in the 90s and things like that. And in the 70s, they had the steak and egg diet. And, yeah. you know, the problem is that it's, um, it's just not mainstream. And it's certainly uh, – it hits a wall of information, like a propaganda and things like that as well. But luckily, I think the internet makes it makes a big difference for us to be able to communicate, that, get that message out a lot more, you know. Yeah, and the, um, science, the science wasn't 100% available to us or even done yet. No. It's not done, but, I mean, yeah. it was not to the maturity that it is now, I think. It re it, well, I've never reached as much, of, uh, like, as big an audience yeah. before, so... Um, you know, most people don't want to sit down and read a book about diet, you know. I mean, to, be, to be honest, like I didn't even know other people that had done Atkins and Keto personally, really. So that's how yeah. little it was, you know. I'd heard about it, but yeah. You know, especially in education, it's always about carbo loading for, you know, sports and things like that. So that's all you got to get. You have to have your carbs. Um, yeah. And I was the same. Like as uh, when, I, when I started this, it was like um, – this is ridiculous, you know, you have to have your carbs, you know, um, and your veggies especially, and you have to, you know, have all your fiber and all that sort of ridiculous um, information, you know. So what about when from the time you started to the time you became fat adapted or comfortable with the, the carnivore diet, what was your transition period like? So the first four weeks were difficult. Uh, lots of cravings, lots of sweet cravings, lots of uh, <clears throat> just uh, diarrhea, you know, getting your body adapted. There's a lot of stuff going on, yeah. a lot of changes. But at the same time, as hard as it was, I lost 26 pounds. And that was so exciting and invigorating. And my energy level skyrocketed and my mind cleared up. So, so many 
you get all these negatives happening, but you have this swell of positive rolling in at the same time. It's like the yin and the yang, yeah. right? I mean, you have both going on. So you're you're struggling, but you're so encouraged because you're getting all this other stuff going on. It's so good that you're like, wow, this is amazing. And um, I mean, I was three and a half, four weeks into it when I went to my physical. Well, my annual physical just happened to be scheduled then. So I got my blood work done and everything. And I went in 26 pounds lighter in my physical and felt great. And uh, still wasn't thin or anything. I mean, I was still 250 something, right? Um, where I'm 233 now. So yeah. you know, I was by no means a skinny guy or anything, but I just felt so much better and looked. And and when I went to the doctor, I just couldn't shut up about carnivore. And uh, of course, she being a, uh, it's a federal um, hospital because it's the VA. So they are strictly, yeah. strictly, all they do is the, um, uh, what do you call it? The care, uh, the, uh, I forget what they call it, but it's the, it's the standard of care. That's what they, they're strictly a standard of care uh, provider and they can't really deviate because they're federal funded federal government were, you know, federal employees. So they are, they're like, well, you know, make sure you go low fat or tell me this, even though I'm telling them I'm yeah. high fat. I mean, even she couldn't even tell, she couldn't tell me anything else. And then she said, well, I want to do another blood test on you in six months just to make sure you're okay. And I'm like, okay, great. That's fantastic. So um, <laughs> that was, that happened and it was, it was great, but yeah. So then my transition from the first four weeks to the second four weeks, what I, it's, I, I, I like the first four weeks to liken it to like freshman year in college, you're figuring out how to be a student in college. You're figuring out how to write research papers, how to use the library system, how to do all the things. The second year you start, okay, you already know all that stuff. Now you're just building, you're becoming a better student. You're getting a little more in depth. So I think my second year is my sophomore, my second month was my sophomore month. And then third month was like junior, senior year, right? Like when you're, okay, I got this thing down. And then on the fourth month, you're definitely like graduated. You're, you are fat adapted carnivore. You've been over a hundred days. And I think for me, that's where my body just started dialing stuff in. That's when I went uh, um, lion diet. I started uh, trying different things out to adjust, you know, to see what worked best for me. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how is it like from that, in that first four months, now you, you're on a uh, full carnival, you're feeling great. Your body's adapted. How has that four months differed like to the way you felt before, like mentally, emotionally, um, physically, what was the difference? Do you think was it that, was it that vast? Oh yeah. The, I mean, being at my age with the injuries I had, from the military and all, I had a lot of uh, a lot of aches and pains, joint aches, uh, arthritis, uh, injured tissue like my ankle, and my knee, and stuff were injured, you know. And and they started healing up my back. My back injury healed up, where it just stopped hurting and it hasn't hurt since. And it's so crazy because I went yeah. decades with a back injury where my back always hurt every day, yeah. and now it doesn't. My lower back, and now I'm doing deadlifts in the gym. So. That all started after that fourth month, I think. And then um, your your brain fog, not ever waking up having a bad day. That's that's a real thing uh, where I used yeah. to wake up and be in a bad mood. Sometimes I just don't anymore. Uh, much more positive outlook, much more motivation, motivation just to get outside and do things, to get sun, to, to walk. Walking the dog is no longer an imposition. My couch became a neglected piece of furniture in my house, and it used to be the the center of my house, you know, because the couch yeah. is where I would spend a lot of time watching TV and just sitting down. Because I, when I woke up, I go sit on the couch and have a cup of coffee. Because now I don't, I walk by the couch and I only sit down on the couch when I'm going to watch a movie with my son, um, or if I'm going to watch a sporting event that I want to watch, like hockey. I, I'm an ice hockey guy, so when a hockey game comes on, I will sit on the couch and watch my guys play, and that's pretty much it. Other than the occasional nap, because it is pretty comfortable, but I, uh, <laughs> I I don't use my I don't use my couch like I used to, and I used to, and I bought a nice couch, man. I had this custom couch, uh, custom leather couch made, is like eight thousand dollars back, you know, years ago when it was my it was my prime seating, and now it's neglected. So yeah, that, that's changed. That's <laughs> wasting money. Yeah, yeah, that's changed. Well, it's still <laughs> nice to sit and watch a movie and stuff, and but you know, yeah. I wouldn't do that today, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's great. So, how is that? Um, how is that 
been emotionally like that that difference that the train the change from a standard western diet to carnival emotionally how has that been for you yeah so before uh this this diet uh you know i mean i i had depression like everyone else probably uh you know i have issues from the military uh so and then anxiety social anxiety not not wanting to go out wanting to self-isolate um a lot of things went on on the old diet and being on this diet is is completely changed that uh, my depression is pretty much gone um uh, i feel like going out and mingling with people and being in public it's not a it's not a, an imposition anymore it's something i, I look forward to uh, i like going to the gym and just seeing people and being around people it's 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 totally different than before and i'm not sure what it was before it was you know a lot of that other social anxiety but also I think I didn't feel like a man like I was, like I'm, I'm supposed to be, right? Because I had lost yeah. a lot of my manly attributes, I guess, like my physical ability to do things, my strength, the way I looked, all these things tied into my mental image. And I didn't feel like going out in public because I didn't like the, I didn't like looking at me and I didn't want to be out there, you know? And now I like yeah. what I look at, I see in the mirror. I'm like, I like it. I go out and I feel like, yeah, this is, you know, this is it, man. This is the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be, I'm representing manhood now, you know, and that's what I feel like. Mm -hmm. So um, when you come for, and in the military, I like to say that first responders in the military, we're the warrior class of a, of a society, right? So we yeah. are supposed to be the guys that are protectors and that are, you know, we don't ask for help. We give help, right? We're those guys. And uh, I didn't feel like that. I didn't feel like that. Uh, but I do now I do. I feel like I could go out and help. I could do things I can, you know, I just feel like yeah. more of a man now than I did. And also I know my testosterone levels are way higher. I mean, everything, all my male markers, including the way I look, the way I feel my strength, testosterone, it's all up, right? I just feel much more capable as a man now. Yeah. Yeah. So your confidence level is up. Obviously, you know, your product, your hormone production is up, your cholesterol. Yep. Um, so have you had any negative side effects from the carnival diet at all uh yeah the only negative stuff i've had is social <laughs> and that's okay. being a single guy uh you know you, i like i like to say that there's three i used to think say when i used to say there's two hills that you know people will defend to the death on and religion and politics and you'll never argue <laughs> anyone into a different position you'll never argue anyone to, on either one of those well now there's a third and it's diet and i didn't know yeah. because i was the same as everyone else so i didn't know but now, like mm -hmm. even when you look on a dating app, I would say 80 to 90 percent of the women uh, on the dating app say one of their favorite hobbies is trying new restaurants. That's something I have no <laughs> interest in whatsoever. Right. And if that's one of their yeah. favorite hobbies, we're not a match. I can tell you that right now. So mm -hmm. um, plus just I've gone out on dates with uh, like I went out on a date with a girl who loved to bake. And she's like, oh, but if I made a pie, you'd eat some. Right. And I said, no, absolutely mm -hmm. not. I said I would not eat a pie if. I don't care if Mother Teresa made it. I don't care if Betty Crocker made it. I wouldn't, you know, I would not eat a pie. That's not going to happen. And uh, right. that was the last time I talked to her. But you know, she couldn't <laughs> believe that. She couldn't believe it. I'm like, she goes, well, I love to bake. I'm like, well, just bake for other people then or bake for yourself. That's cool. I'm just not going to eat it. You know, yeah. and uh, some people just can't handle that, I guess. Yeah, I know. They, they seem to get offended if you if they make something and you, you just don't want to eat it. Like, it's like, I don't understand a lot why of yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't really understand why they'd be offended by that. Like if you just don't feel like eating something, why push someone? I, I think some people's love language is cooking. I really do. I think that is yeah. like some people want to make a meal for you. But yeah. then again, they expect you to eat that. And if you yeah. don't, then that's like rejecting their love language, I guess. I mean, I, I know people have done that. You know, they mm -hmm. I had a friend who went to a stay with their friends and their friends knew that she was having a rough time. So they baked, they made this big Italian meal for her and she's a carnivore. And she's like, she didn't want to eat it, but she didn't have it in her to say no. So she ate the food next day was yeah. sick all day, all day. I mean, I can, can you imagine eating yeah. pasta and all that veg yeah, and sauces, salad yeah. and dressing like oil and vinegar? Oh my God. I couldn't imagine eating that now. And yeah, um, yeah I would have no problem saying no, but that's me. I'm a jerk. <laughs> So I can do that. 
Yeah, I, I got no problem with that. <laughs> I got no problem with that at all. Right. Yeah, but I can understand some people are going to have a trouble, you know, saying no. Um, yeah. But you know, that's that's part of the deal. You know, if you if you want to be healthy, you have to be able to say no to foods that you know are going to make you sick. Um, like, uh, yeah, recent uh, family outing, like you know, you have a family par- gathering, you have a big party, yeah. and it's all junk food, you know, it's um, yeah. alcohol and soft drinks and sugar and sugar and sugar and sugar, and uh, they look at you funny because you don't want to eat anything. So I know yeah, it's so funny but- that when people find out you're not eating vegetables or fruit, and then they they seem to be compelled to ask you, well, when are you going to start eating that again? And if yeah. I say never, then there's a major problem. Well, what about your health? It's like, but but when I was eating donuts and I was eating uh, Oreo cookies and ice cream, no mm-hmm. one ever, ever even raised an eyebrow or, you know, batted an eye. Yeah. And now it's a huge yeah, you deal. You can sit that there I and eat a box of donuts. Yeah. yeah. And that's totally yeah, fine. Have that family with, yeah. reunion. But if you don't have fruit and veg on your plate, then they're going to look at you and say, why, why, what are you doing? What's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it's weird. So weird. Yeah. You, you're going to make yourself sick if you only you eat programmed. meat. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. And it didn't take much to, I mean, you have a look at all the programming and it's all around you. You know, that's uh, everywhere you go, propaganda that's uh, advertising and everything yeah. else, you know, TV. Most people spend a lot of time watching TV as well. The people on TV look healthy. They eat a box of donuts. So, you know, you should be right too. You know? Yeah. It's sad. So, the beer commercials are all guys with six pack abs drinking beer. Yeah, that's like, right. You yeah. Know, playing volleyball yeah. in the sun. It's like, yeah, okay, it's in between. When you're 40, and, you can get away with that. But yeah. when you're 40, good yeah, luck. That's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. In your 20s, you can, you're bulletproof and you can eat anything. Like yeah. you could go out and have a, a all weekend of just binge drinking and eating donuts and you feel fine and you, know, you shake it off on the Monday and you're ready to go back to college or work and uh, everything's good. But it does catch up to you. Well, yeah. it makes you wonder though how we would have been in our 20s. Like when I was playing rugby, if I had been carnivore, maybe I'd have been like Chafee, just like unstoppable. I mean, maybe, you know, yeah. I don't know, but. Uh, I have a theory that I probably would have been much better player, you know, uh, and, yeah. and just better conditioning. And, uh, so anyway, that's, it's, it's kind of sad that we were misled by these, this, I guess it's an oligarchy of, you know, the food industry and, is, yeah. Medical, I mean, medical industries. Yeah. This, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, the medical, medical industry, the medical, in, um, like education, yeah. But, you know, that all comes down to the food industry that, you know, that pays for the education as well. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, you know, we're talking about that with some others the other day, you know, how many you know, misdiagnoses are, you know, is the third highest killer in the world. But, you know, all of it comes down to the food industry, isn't it? So you know, I would say that would be the highest killer in the world, really. Yeah. Um, and it does make you wonder, you know, like what, what kind of a life would you have had if you'd grown up on the the proper human diet, um, you know, if you if you ever spoken to Rick on like on the forty year carnival, he started when he was fifteen and he had a growth spurt. Like he started um, junior high as like the shortest guy in class and finished yep. high school as mm-hmm. one of the tallest. You know, so you know it'd be a completely different life. Yeah, I, so, uh, I I think that even if you just did keto and just did whole foods as a kid, you'd yeah. get so much better nutrition, right? If you're just doing a whole food, yeah. like a primal diet, right? Where you ate some veg and fruit, yeah. fine, whatever. You, you, like you said, we're so resilient as children that that little bit probably won't even interfere. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, it, I think it just make a big difference all, all in general, I think, as a species as well. You think, have a look around now, it's, uh, what, 70% of adults are obese, um, you know, in the West anyway. So, you know, it's it, a it, huge amount of soy boys out there, which are uh, uh, feminine men. Yeah. There's a lot of feminine men out there. There are. Yeah, that's I don't, right. I, actually yeah, don't call soy them boys and, I wouldn't call them men. No, I mean, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
Yeah, even that's a bit uh, high testosterone for them, I think, some of them. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, soy boys is a good term, I think. It uh, it's pretty much sums it up. But so what – how has Carnivore changed not only your physical health but your life in general? Uh, well, so I had resigned to just surviving – uh, when I was <clears throat> 58, I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to be on this general slow decline, hopefully, hopefully slow of health. Yeah. And I'm just going to hold on and try to, um, you know, hunker down and survive as long as I can. And my enjoyment was like watching movies and, you know, not really, I didn't have a lot of enjoyment in life. <clears throat> I didn't have a zest for life. I didn't have a lot of, uh, I didn't have hope, I'd say. I didn't have plans for a future. I was just holding on. And I was just hoping and praying that every time I went to the doctor, I wasn't going to be diagnosed with cancer or something. That's what, to be honest, you know, or, or early onset um, dementia because my mom died of Alzheimer's at 68, which is 10 years older than I am right now. So, and her last 10 years were a terrible lifestyle, life uh, quality. So that's yeah. where I was. Now I am planning on another, I'm not even middle age. I'm planning on another 62 years of life, get to 120, you know, to be my average, uh, where our body's designed to go. So I'm thinking, man, if I lived another 60 years, what well, if, if I lived until my son is my age now, which is another 48, uh, 50 years, you know, what, yeah. what would I have to do? Cause I can't just sit back and do nothing for 50 years, right? That's ridiculous. Yeah. So I've got plans on, you know, my, I have a second career. Uh, I, I, I am a wireless network architect for the University of Texas here in Austin. Um, I have a, a company I run on the side where I do inspections on weekends for properties. I run this YouTube channel and this is not for money. It's for, um, it's strictly a passion project to get this message out because it's changed my life so much. My why began with just me and it was big enough to get me healthy. And then my why expanded so much that I had to do other things like start a YouTube channel. That's how big my why mm -hmm. got. So my why became, you know, went beyond me not getting cancer or um, staying healthy and living longer to see my son and be with him through his life. But it also became now to encompass a bigger net of sharing with other people and trying to change other people's lives too, like by offering my support and my help. And, um, you know, not trying to convince people to do this, but when I find people that want to, coming alongside them, encouraging them, and giving them information, and pointing them in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. So, as a first responder yourself, uh, you're in the military for so long. Um, a lot of people come out with uh, PTSD, yeah. um, and I know in a well in America uh, worldwide soldiers um, and first responders, this is a, big, a very big problem. And the the uh, suicide rate is astronomical. You are trying on your channel now to try and um, highlight that. Yeah. And so how has the carnivore diet, how has that affected your, your I mean, obviously you've got a new mission in life yeah, to yeah. try and help people in those situations. So talk about that. Let's um, walk well, through that a bit. And, and, you know, everyone thinks it's PTSD, but PTSD, you know, I've had it. I mean, I've, I've got it. It doesn't go away, but it's, um, it's not the driving force behind these suicides. And we know that yeah. for several reasons. Yeah. The, the, the reason we know that <clears throat> because we've been tracking suicides in the military uh, and the, um, since I think Korean War or World War, World War II, and yeah. we went from five to, in every 100,000 in World War II in Korea to 17 every 100,000 of active duty now. This is active duty uh, yeah. in Vietnam to 22 to 24 now per 100,000. Yeah. So that it all ramped up after Korea, which is the yeah. 60s and then going to the 70s, you know, and then the 80s. Really, the veterans got out and started eating that standard American diet. And I really think a lot of it has to do with diet. And as as part of it but the reason we know ptsd is not the main driver is that most 
military veterans or military active duty that commit suicide right now have never been deployed. So, yeah. and, it, and there's more of them committing suicide than there are of soldiers that actually deployed. So, wow. so we know PTSD is a driver, but the army's done studies and the number one um, cause of suicide, according to the army studies in the military is untreated depression. That's number one. And they always have right. uh, com uh, combining factors, right? They always have contributing factors to this. You have, uh, you have untreated depression, and then you add to it a relationship issue, a money issue, a legal issue, a substance abuse issue, any of one of those, or a combination. Yeah. And then you have a toxic soup ready for suicide, right? Same with uh, law enforcement, firefighters, paramedics. I mean, it, arguably, you could say paramedics see much more trauma on a daily basis and horrific things than than even soldiers do, right? Because they're doing it every day yeah. for their living. And same with emergency room doctors and nurses. Uh, so it's not the PTSD. What I think it is, what my theory is, is we are the warrior class. We don't like to ask for help. We don't like to complain. So we internalize and we yeah. self-medicate and we isolate because you know people don't understand it. Like veterans and first responders like to talk to other veterans and first responders because we've been there, we understand. And we don't really oh, want to share. <clears throat> yeah, and we don't want to just share with civilians because they just don't, we feel like they don't understand. They might understand, I don't know, but we just feel like they've never been there, they don't understand. So yeah. I think that what this uh, did for me was it lifted me out of that untreated depression, I think. That's, you know, no drugs required. Uh, my, my optimism returned, my sense of purpose returned, my motivation levels returned and depression went away. So if you can get rid of the depression, I think you can put a real dent in those numbers. Right. And the other yeah. thing is this, you don't have to go to a doctor or a counselor. You don't have to like seek a prescription. You don't have to get a diagnosis. You can do this on your own, which is another thing first responders and veterans love to do is to fix it ourselves. We're like fix it ourselves people, right? If I can, if you yeah. can give me an option to sit at home and try this, for four weeks to see if it makes a difference. That is far superior than me having to go to some counseling or to, you know, to get with some doctor and have a doctor evaluate me. We hate that. I mean, I can say general, I hate that uh, yeah. specifically. So um, I think that by getting this message out and saying, hey, what do you got to lose? You know, how's it working for you right now, right? If it's not, then why don't you try this? Because this actually works and it doesn't cost you anything. There's no money. You don't buy a program. You don't buy an application for your phone. You don't even have to blow into a thing or take your blood or anything. You just not eat, not just eat meat and salt and yeah. water and then see what happens. And, you know, it, you can do it for four weeks and find out if your mental changes start happening. Cause I think that's yeah. about how long it took for me. So anyway, that that's a superior option. And uh, I like to just share it with people like, hey, if you're feeling down, try this. What do you have to lose? What could yeah. possibly work, be worse than where you're at now? You know, and that's that's the message. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I, um, you know, going through uh, everything I was going through at the time, um, you know, one of the biggest messages was for me, like everyone else is saying, you should talk to someone, you should talk to a counselor, you should talk to, to this person, you should talk to this and that, and you should do that and you should do this. All I needed was time to myself to sort out in my own head what I need to do, what's going on, and that sort of thing. So work it out for yourself, you know. Um, I think a lot of people are like that. They don't I – don't, I, I never saw the point in going and talking to a counsellor who's just going to sit there and listen and not really actually actively do anything to help. What was yeah. the point of that, you know? It just seems pointless to me. Um it's interesting you're talking about the PTSD with the um, you know, people who have never been deployed. So like you said, it's a depression thing. So you think these people are already depressed before they went into the military? Uh, hard to say. I, I mean, I think that it's just hard to say because I think the like, okay, so we, we know that um, low serum cholesterol levels lead to depression and uh, yeah. gambling and risk taking and, and uh, anger, um, erratic behavior, all kinds of things are tied to it, right? There's definitely yeah. correlation. 
to that. Uh, and probably causation, a low blood. So, I mean, they've done tests on people after they committed suicide and a vast majority of them have low serum cholesterol levels. So yeah. you're more likely to do a violent end to yourself, a violent one with a gun or something, if you have low serum cholesterol than the people that commit suicide that didn't. Um, so they may take overdose of pills or something, right? So uh, anyway, so we, so I think that people on this diet, on the standard American diet, depending on how bad their diet is, I think that and their genetics probably, that contributes to like what their depression level is, how they're handling it and their age, right? So, yeah. and then you throw into that, like I said, the relationship, the money, the legal issues, whatever career issues, whatever other things get added in, that's, those are the triggers. And I, I like, I like to say that, you know, there's a fulcrum and what happens is if you, if all these things, these career relationship issues over here over get too heavy, then you'll commit suicide, right? I think the fulcrum yeah. just shifted. It just shifted so that it's easier. It takes less of those things to make you make that jump, that decision to take that permanent solution to a temporary problem option, yeah. right? And I think, so I, I just believe that it is, I really do believe it's diet, you know, that we've been pushing this low cholesterol, you know, keep your blood cholesterol low, you know, for your heart health. I mean, eat, yeah. uh, I see all these commercials, they still have them, I think. The Oreos commercials, the oatmeal commercials, try to keep your blood cholesterol low, right? So for heart health. Well, we know that's totally false now. Yeah. And not only that, but it's dangerous to have low cholesterol, low serum cholesterol. So, yeah. um, well, we know that, and yeah, a lot of people yeah. know that. Unfortunately, not everyone knows that, and well, they're still pushing studies, that low right? cholesterol the, diets. The studies yeah. have been out since 2019, no one talks about them because they don't they don't match their marketing narrative, and that's unfortunate. That's right. Well, the first, like, some of the first ones like, were back in the uh, like even in the 80s and 90s, they had studies that proved that low cholesterol is correlated with depression and and suicide yep. um and then again like what 2012 i think um yeah 2019 as well so i mean how many times do you need to keep repeating the same studies you know, before people yeah. actually realize it and you see the the ramp up in suicides per hundred thousand you know military people started in the 70s yeah, and that's when we introduced this low cholesterol, low fat diet. It's the low fat yeah. diet, really, what it is. Yeah. We're low animal fat, high plant fat, and that mm -hmm. is when the. And I think it's not just military. I think if you looked at all suicide rates, you'd probably find that they all Absolutely. went up and they've all gone up. Uh, so yeah. even people that aren't military first responders, or whatever, um, they're they're under the same uh, deleterious effects of the diet that we are. Right? We yeah. just like. We're just in focus, I think, and I think, but yeah. I think that problem is society wide for Western civilization that's eating this food. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the, I mean, the suicide rate has gone up ever since the uh, the introduction of the uh, the food pyramid and, and uh, yeah. the standard sort of uh, you know that started back in the late seventies, early eighties. So, and the low fat, you can see the the difference. You know, um, in numbers just correlate together they both climb so along with illness and things like that all right so um what your aim uh for your youtube channel what is the where can people find you what are you doing with it and uh what are you hoping to achieve with it yeah so my it is like a dual purpose channel one it's um the main the main reason I have it is to get the message of carnivore out generally to people and and it's really my style. I'm not a uh, medical expert. I'm not a I don't know all the science. I mean I've read the science, but I can't like spout it off and you know uh, I understand the science, but I'm not a scientific expert. So my expertise is in motivation and application. So I can applicate uh, apply. So I can teach people how to apply a um you know i say an ancestral diet how to apply it in your life in a modern day lifestyle modern setting because it's not super easy right there are some things you have to do a little different to uh to actually eat a carnivore diet yeah that's my carnivore soldier page um 
And so my, my a lot of my videos are practical application and uh, how to's and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and and strategies and advice on like doing it cheap and motivating yourself and staying motivated. I also do movie reviews. So just I have a lot of different videos, but it's different than a lot of the other carnivores, I think, because um, like I said, my whole goal is to uh, make it where it's a a um, an achievable thing, like a, a you know, it's something that's not um, I guess out of reach because because a lot of people, you know, it's, it's kind of like when you become a Christian, you look at a, a book that's thousands of years old and say, OK, how do I apply this to a modern lifestyle? Right. Yeah. This Christian book, because it was written by guys who didn't even know what an engine was or an airplane or and but yet it still applies. because you, you can still apply it successfully. So same with carnivore diet. This diet has been around ancestrally for hundreds of thousands of years, arguably, or maybe millions. So millions, how do you yeah. apply it today, though? Right. So how do you apply that today? How, you know, we, we, we're not going to go push uh, or scare a bunch of buffalo off a cliff and go skin them, right? So, But we still want to eat as clean and as close to that diet as we can in today's society. So how do we do that? What's it look like? And what's the easiest, healthiest way, way to do it? And that's kind of my goal. And then the, the second thing I started after I started the channel was Mission Carnivore, which is really focused on the mental health and well-being of veterans and first responders and how this can be a great tool to save lives and to, to change people's lives. I mean, I've, there's so many veterans and first responders I've talked to who have had their lives completely changed, 180 degrees, you know, where, again, they're like me, where they're planning for a future. They're, you know, they, they've given up hope. There's hope again. Uh, yeah. It's like Kerry's doing with his video. I mean, but it's just the reason I have one geared towards first responders and, um, military because I've worked in both industries. I was military and I worked in a police department for five years uh, as a technical person, but I worked with law enforcement for a long time. So I know those guys. I've been yeah. friends with them, with their families. And and I can tell you, um, you know, these are the guys that are hurting that will not ask for help. They are suffering in silence. And that's why that's I made it a channel for them so I can talk to them directly because they'll listen yeah. to someone who's been there with them, right? Yeah, that's the thing. I was, I was going back to what you're saying before. I think they find it easier to talk to someone who knows what it feels like to be military or first responder mm -hmm. because right. they they feel like they have more understanding. You know, so I think yeah. that's the right thing. I mean, like you were saying before, like suicide rates, for example, and depression, they are like a general a population thing as well. You know, it's quite high, and it's it's just. Um, I think, like you said, it's just easier for them to relate to someone like yourself because you've been in that situation. You've been in the right. same situation or similar situations to what they have been in. So they feel like a, 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 um, a camaraderie sort of thing. Yeah. And then on top of that, I'm an example of a turnaround, right? Where I was, I showed pictures of me where I was way out of, you know, 280 pounds and I'm down to 233 in one year. And over the, I've documented a lot of that change. Even when I first video, as you can see, I was more inflamed back then. I was, you know, wasn't as quite as uh, chiseled chin and everything like I have now. Yeah. A lot of I've changed since I've been my since my channel started in last uh, August. So yeah. I mean, they can actually see the changes, and they can see that okay, this guy is a soldier and worked in law enforcement and a former sailor, and he's done it. So that means I can do it, right? It's not you don't have to be some super doctor like if like i said if i would have only seen guys like uh like baker sean baker and um anthony chafee as carnivores i'd be like okay well those guys are like md superheroes and they have like mm -hmm. chiseled physiques like i could never do that right but when i see yeah. guys like dante fregno and like regular people do it i'm like okay i can do that that guy, that guy has no credentials he's not like some yeah. you know doctor or uh, you know nutrition specialist or anything and he's he's turned his whole life around by himself in his kitchen, in his kitchen yeah. and not buying any drugs or supplements, no supplements yeah. required. Right. And that's the other thing I love. You know, you don't have to buy if someone's let me tell you something. If someone's selling you supplements on their channel, I would pretty much go the other way. I mean, I, I you yeah. know, supplements are not required unless you're doing this thing wrong, I think, uh, yeah. other than maybe some, I some very little, very little bits. 
of supplements and it's on a case by case basis of what you're eating. If you're eating fish and stuff, you probably don't need an iodine even if you're depending if you're getting wild caught fish yeah. that's not farm raised. Yeah, it depends on where you're coming from yeah. to like your yeah. situation. So yeah, some may need to supplement along the way until they have healed, until their body heals and then they can give it they can get rid of the supplements. Uh, so yeah. it depends on where you're going from where you're coming from as to how long that transition period is going to take for you and where your body is going to be at the optimal level where you can give give up the supplements and give up the medications and things like that. And ultimately, I think that's the goal. That should be the goal for everyone is to become independent from medications. You know, being medication-free is an amazing feeling. Yeah. yeah. And medications come from plants, right? I mean, it's, it's right. so interesting. I mean, most, you know, and actually all addictions pretty much come from plants too, uh, right. or a plant-based diet anyway. Uh, you could say mm -hmm. even like porn addiction and gambling addiction, because a lot of people I know who've gone to meet have given up those things as well. It's a lot of smoking. Mm -hmm. So you got nicotine, you got caffeine, you got sugar, you got heroin, codeine, all these things. These are all plant-based. Nothing yeah, in there is not. So if you eat a plant-based diet, you have direct exposure to those addictive substances. Plus, you get a low cholesterol. Now you add bad mental health and, uh, you know, impulsive behavior, gambling, these kind of things. I'm telling you, I know people personally who walked away from those things and didn't even ever plan to. Like, I don't drink like I used to. I drink very yeah. sparingly and socially. I used to drink every night, and it, and when I when I started this, I did not intend to give up drinking. I never intended. I thought, well, I can keep drinking. You know, that's cool. Yeah. And never in a million years did I think I would quit drinking. I just quit drinking. I know guys that quit smoking cigarettes, and they never planned on that either. They went on this diet, and then just ran out of cigarettes one day and, and forgot to buy a pack and didn't miss it. It's weird, yeah. but it really does yeah. happen. So I think there's something in the brain that's turned on or switched where your addictions – are not as powerful. They don't have as much control over you, including food, yeah, sugar. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, the, you know, all addictions really come from the same area. And um, yeah, you know, speaking to Todd from the Carnival Cure, he was the same. You know, he used to chew tobacco forty odd years, um, or twenty six seven years or something. Um, but he also had a gambling addiction. But all that went away once he was yeah. on Carnival. Even and those he didn't habits. He didn't plan and to, it right. just happened. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was just trying to lose weight. But it's just, it changes your habits as well because you just you just don't get that desire um, that you do. I mean, uh, I think it's just an addiction thing. It's a, whatever you're addicted to, you're always susceptible to other addictions. So when you're addicted to sugar, it's very easily to, you know, very easy to be addicted to other things, you know. And I um, think uh, other things change too. Like I would, I didn't like doing my budgeting on a regular basis. Like I would probably do it once every month. I'd get into my finances and kind of budget stuff out. Now I do it every morning. I get up, I yeah. open a spreadsheet, open my bank and I mark things cleared off. And every morning and I enjoy it. It's so weird. Yeah. I mean, things, like I said, the motivation level completely changed um, where I'm looking for things to do around the house. I'm looking for things to do. Like I probably my, my budgeting part part of it's my routine now, but I mean that never was happened, never ever happened when I was on Standard American Diet. But now that I've been on Carnivore, it is a daily routine thing, and I like to do. I enjoy it. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, Do you find anything like I, that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm the same. Um, I find it much easier to just get up, and you're, you're more focused. Yeah, and you can you can think clearer about each job that you have to do, and you say, okay, I've got to do this. Whereas before, you just it took you so much time. You just procrastinate, and you think about it, and you sit down on the couch and you think, "Yeah, I should get up and maybe do this and and do that." But then you sort of you know turn on the TV and watch a movie and think, oh, "I'll do it yeah. later." Yeah, that's <laughs> put things off, and it never happens. I don't do that like yeah. that anymore. Yeah. And then the other thing is like when I go to the gym, uh, I remember I, I I get great workouts now. I get epic workouts like I used to in college, but. In college, I would get tired of doing sets. I don't get yeah. tired of doing sets anymore. What happens is I will get a failure, but I'll, I'll feel like keep doing it, but I just run out of time. It's like, all right, I got to move to the next exercise, even though yeah. I can sit here and do this like five or six more times, you know, sets. Yeah. And I just don't have the time to do it. And 
I don't feel sore afterwards at all, but I mean, it's, it's just a wonderful feeling to be limited on my workouts by my time. Cause I want to go do something else. Like, all right, I'm going to finish this out. I'm going to get my awesome pump in and, you know, go to failure and all this. And, but I've never had that before where I just felt like I keep going. I just keep going and going and going and not get tired. The only thing that really tires me out is sprinting where I am smoked at the end of sprinting. I mean, I'm just <laughs> cause I'm getting so <laughs> aspirated, you know, I, mean, I get my heart rate up to 170, 172, which is pretty high for my age, I guess. But I mean, and then it drops back down really quick though. Cause I'm in getting good shape. Right. So it'll drop down to 145 pretty quick. And I'll start doing more sprints, but my last sprint, Dude, I am done. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm shaking, you know, which is yeah. great. Yeah, that's good. So what does the day of eating look like for you on the carnivore diet then? It's changed. Um, when I began, I used to snack a lot and I used to fry a pound of bacon every day and put it in the fridge and wow. use that to snack. As, so I had an alternate mm -hmm. snack. I knew I didn't want to go into cheese. I knew I didn't want to. I want to be meat based as much as possible when I started. So that's what I started on. By the end of three months, I was I stopped doing the bacon and it just sat in the fridge and I only made it for breakfast, right? With eggs. Yeah. So um and I ate bacon eggs for breakfast back when I started. Now I pretty much skip breakfast. Um I used to eat burgers and steaks a lot in the middle, like in the beginning. I don't eat as many steaks anymore, I eat more burger. But since I've been working out the last four weeks and my waistline is still dropping, I, my weights are the same and I'm putting on muscle, but my waistline has dropped another inch. And what I've been wow. eating is a dozen eggs with a, uh, a cup of heavy whipping cream and I make a shake out of them. So I do a half a dozen with a half a cup and then a half yep. a dozen with a half a cup. I do two shakes a day and then I and I do um, about a pound of ground beef and, and butter. Okay. And that's it. That's all I've been eating. And my waist and my body is just responding so well to that because I'm lifting so heavy, I think, and uh, doing my workouts that... Uh, you know, my testosterone levels are gone up. My, I just, I just feel fantastic. And I just feel like super energized. All the fat, I mean, it's a very high fat diet, yeah. but it, it's good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. High fat is the way we should be eating. Yeah. We should, uh, you know, we should be having at least double our um, protein intake in, in fat as well. So that's something, you know, most people don't uh, try to, they always try to focus on the protein, but fats is what you should be focused on. Right. Um, so has the carnivore diet been, have you found to be uh, more expensive or cheaper than the standard oh. Western diet? Oh, it's far cheaper for me, especially now doing a dozen eggs. I mean, mm. I'm doing the high quality eggs and they're like $6. So that's six bucks a day. A pound of beef, another six bucks, right? So that's $12 a day and that's high quality. Bad. No, and then um, a cup of uh, whipping cream is probably about a dollar twenty-five. So, maybe thirteen and a quarter, and then some butter. I'm eating for less than fifteen dollars a day. Really high quality. I could go way yeah. cheaper. I could go. I can get eggs for seventy cents a piece if I want. Okay. Um, actually, less than I get eggs for like. No, eggs are ten cents a piece. I'm sorry, ten or twelve cents a piece if they're just regular eggs. So I could get. Uh, actually, I think it's $2.50 for a dozen. I could get a dozen for two fifty, dollars and then eat. I could eat cheaper beef, too. I could get the yeah. really cheap beef that's ground beef. So if you want to, you know, you could still do carnivore for $40 or $50 a week, I think, in America. If you went to buy just a 10-pound tube of the 80-20 ground beef and then bought just a case of eggs, 60 eggs, mm. right? You could... You could do that and eat pretty inexpensively. I eat much less expensively because I used to throw away a lot of food. I used to buy a lot of ingredients. I don't buy ingredients anymore. Uh, it's weird because my son has gone keto war from carnivore, so he's eating whole food, but I have to buy ingredients for him now. I have to buy different things and I'm throwing food away again, which I've never, I haven't done in over a year, but I bought a bag of lettuce because he wanted a salad and I bought him okay. some dressing that was, um, the dressing I bought him was primal, so it's it's pretty clean as far as store bought. Okay, it's got uh, made with uh, um, avocado oil, so and it, and it's and it's it's pretty clean. There's no sugar in it, so I buy him that dressing. But still, I end up throwing away half of the lettuce that I buy because he's only here a couple days a week, yeah. and um, I made some sweet potatoes for him. I fried them up in lard, 
and made sweet potato fries and he loved them. He's like, Oh dad, these are great. You know, these are better uh, than the ones you get in the store or, you know, the, at the, at the uh, fast food. So I, I make yeah, him some stuff. Cool. Yeah. But I have to throw some stuff away, but you know, like I said, he's so young. It's, it's fine. He's, he's doing well. And when he's with me, he eats a lot of fat and a lot of meat, no, that's a lot cool. of healthy fat. Yeah. All, right. All right. So what kind of, uh, what advice would you give anyone uh, going through a transition onto carnivore diet? Yeah, I, <clears throat> it depends on the person. For me, I knew myself. I know I'm not a moderator. I can't just eat two cookies and put the package back. I'm eating the whole, whole, whole package if I can. Yeah. So I knew that's the way I was. So I decided that, you know, I had to do the Cortez thing and burn the ships. Like when Cortez came to the new world, he burned the ships so the men wouldn't want to go home or didn't think there was a way to go home. They had to win. Right. And that's the way I was. I'm like, all right, this is the way it's going to be. I'm throwing all that stuff out of my house. I'm just doing a hundred percent transition day one, which is what I did. And it was hard, but if you can gird your loins, as I said, in my video today and just, um, suck it up for four weeks you can have amazing returns and that's all it takes four weeks of unpleasantness you know go ahead and whine about it that's fine that'll work just do it though i mean so my my point is some people say ease in i could never do that maybe some people can and if you can and you want to fine but even if you could i wouldn't want to like why drag yeah. it out you know yeah. just go through it go through it um it's not it's unpleasant. It's not going to hurt you. It's not uh, dangerous. It's just unpleasant. And if you can't handle unpleasantness and not being comfortable all the time, then you might have a rough road ahead in life because life's not always going to be very comfortable, right? So I would just say, suck it up, gird your loins, drive through four weeks of hardship, and then start enjoying the good life from that point on. Because That's what happens. Yep. Very good. Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. And maybe that's no, my army side coming out. But, you know, in the army, I've seen people come from all walks of life and go to basic training, go through these very difficult schools and succeed. Yeah. And I know everyone can. They're capable of it. You just have to have a why. And if you if you can't, then your why is probably not big enough. That's all I got to say. Because you had a why that was big enough, you could. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I, I did that discussion about having a check in escrow, right? Writing a check to yourself. Yep. Like if I, if I got with that person that said, well, I could never do that. I could never do X, Y, or Z. I could never go without fruit or without uh, salad for a month. And if I got that same person said, listen, I'm going to write you a $25,000 check right now. We're going to put it in escrow. And at the end of the month, if you didn't have any fruit and all you ate was carnivore, you get that check. How many people would have a problem staying on that diet knowing it's $25,000 yeah. on the check you're waiting for them, right? None. Because that's the why, right? You have to make your why. And if you don't have a why, then write yourself, actually literally get your checkbook out and write yourself a check for $25,000 and put it in your wallet and carry that thing around and write yourself a check. Because no one could pay me $25,000 now to go back. No one could. No, no one right. could pay me $250,000 to go back. I would not do it. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, I, where I'm going forward, that's a drop in the bucket compared to what I've got in my life going on. So yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, so we'll leave with uh, what is your favorite thing about the uh, carnivore diet? Uh, my favorite thing is losing weight and feeling young and fit and having great workouts without ever feeling hungry. Never once did I feel yeah. hungry that I didn't just eat. And yeah. um, not, you know, I used to have a, I used to have a, a, a mindset that. When I had hunger pains, that that's what losing weight felt like. So I knew I was on, that's what I used to think, you know, that, oh, I must, I, you know, I'm doing the work because I have hunger pains. I'm not comfortable. So I'm, so I'm going to be losing weight. And in this way, I've lost weight so much faster, so much easier, so much healthier and never been hungry. It's amazing because it's a fasting mimicking diet. So you can eat and still be fasting. Yeah. Very good. Okay, well, we'll finish up there, and um, yeah, thanks for your time, man. Uh, I really appreciate that. Right on, thanks brother. Anytime, on. DC. Good talking to you, mm -hmm. man.